This viscast has a one-dimensional motion problem with constant acceleration. Pause the video for a moment and read the question carefully. Now that you've read the question, it should be clear that what's being asked is the acceleration of the train. And importantly, that acceleration is taken to be constant. There's some important information supplied in the question. One piece of information involves the distance that's being moved, 8 metres long each time a carriage goes past. And additional information is that the first carriage takes 1.6 seconds to move past you and the second carriage 1 second. Immediately you can see, because those times are different, the train is not moving at constant velocity, so there must be an acceleration. As is often the case, a sketch of the situation can be very useful. So let's have one of our carriages of the train here, and right next to it another one of the carriages. Here you are standing beside the train as it goes past. There'll be some distance d that each of those carriages moves as it goes past you. And we can think of the first carriage going past in some time t1, and the second carriage moving past in a time that we'll call t2. Now, because the question quite clearly states this is a constant acceleration problem, we might go to our equations of motion for constant acceleration. And here are the equations of motion. Now, it's certainly possible to solve this problem using these equations of motion. But what you'll find is it's actually quite difficult. There are so many things in this problem that we don't seem to know at the start. For example, we don't seem to know the initial velocity at any stage of the problem. Some people make the incorrect assumption that the train is going to start from rest. Although the question makes it quite clear that as you come to watch the train, it's already moving. So it's certainly not the case that we can assume the initial velocity is zero. We don't know the final velocity at any point. And of course, we don't know the acceleration. That's what we're trying to find. So looking at that list of things that we don't know from the question, looking at those equations of motion, it's not clear how we would start the problem. A much more straightforward way to do this problem is to think about it in terms of average velocities and average accelerations. The average acceleration, which will be the same as the instantaneous acceleration, if our acceleration is constant, is defined here as being a change in velocity divided by a change in time. So if we could find two velocities that this train is moving at, and the time that it takes to go between those two velocities, we could calculate the acceleration. But there is a velocity that we can find, and that is an average velocity. The average velocity, recall, is the displacement change divided by the time taken. So, for example, we could find the average velocity, which we'll call Vav1, as the first carriage moves past in time 1. The first carriage moving past is a displacement change of 8 metres, and the question told us that took 1.6 seconds. That gives us an average velocity of 5 meters per second as that first carriage moves past. And we can do the same thing for the situation as the second carriage moves past. The average velocity there will be the displacement change as that second carriage moves past divided by the time that it took. And again that's an 8 meter carriage now divided by 1 second. And that gives us an average velocity of 8 meters per second. So there we clearly have a change in velocity. What we really need to think about now is what do we know about the time that it took to move between those two velocities? Well, a constant acceleration tells us that our velocity is going to vary linearly with time. And if we're not sure about that, we can always remind ourselves by looking at this equation just up here, our equation of motion that tells us there's a linear relationship between velocity and time when our acceleration is constant. If we look at either of these other two equations, we can see here that displacement and time vary quadratically, or displacement and velocity. So it's not so useful to think about whereabouts in space this average occurs, it's much more useful to think about whereabouts in time this average occurs. So that tells us that if our velocity varies linearly with time, 
then the average velocity will occur halfway through in time. So v of 1 occurs at a time of a half t1. That's when the average velocity of the train is exactly equal to 5 meters per second, halfway through the time it takes for the first carriage to go past. And similarly, v average 2 occurs, and here it's a little bit more complicated, it occurs after the first carriage has gone past, plus half the time for the second carriage to go past. So let's move our page up a little bit here. So this one here at half t1, this one here at t1 plus a half t2. So now our change in time will be our final time, that's t1 plus a half t2, that's when the train is travelling at that v of 2 speed, minus a half t1. That's when the train is travelling at v of 1. And that can be reasonably easily rewritten. In fact, there's a half t1 plus a half t2. And we can rewrite this as simply a half into the sum of those two times. And when you do that calculation, that change in time comes out to be 1.3 seconds. And now we have everything we need to calculate the acceleration. It is the change in velocity, that is 8 minus 5. That's how the velocity changed, divided by the time it took to go between those two velocities, which was 1.3 seconds, and that comes out as 2.3 meters per second squared. Again, to brush up on your mathematics, it's useful to go back to those equations of motion and make sure this indeed is the solution that matches those conditions. And you can see immediately how very useful it can be to think about things in terms of average velocities, average accelerations, and the time at which those occur.